Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we are here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. Best offlaners rated by Collapse, Spirit's winning streak is gone, Liquid hates Quinn and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. We shall start our episode with Mason, who reached 9k MMR after being unbanned. It's better than Watson, it's better than Miracle, it's better than RTZ, it's better than Yatara, it's better than Ame, it's only a matter of time, they can't keep me in shackles, they can't shackle the beast, they can't Stop me, Smurf pool, unranked, turbo, random draft, single draft, low priority, muted, unmuted, it doesn't matter, on stream, off stream, I will do it. According to the player, he is the strongest streamer and no shackles in the form of Valve will hold him back. It seems guys, we are waiting for the new top 1 European rank. And maybe even a quick return to a pro team, who knows. For example, maybe OG should pick him instead of Yuragi, they would definitely play with new colors then. By the way, speaking of top-rated players, Durachu shared that he started to take pubs much more seriously. According to the player, he stopped feeding a lot and making thoughtless actions. But not everything is so good, according to the carry of Gigi, because of this he started to get much more frustrated with teammates who make mistakes, throw in solo or simply don't care about the game. At the moment, Durachu is ranked 205 in the ladder. By the way, GG players recently experienced real bullying. After the Gladiators won at a score of 2-0 against Team Liquid, the teams went to shake hands, but the offlaner of Team Liquid just walked by. A bit of a mental barrier, you know, you're always doubting yourself when you're playing versus somebody that you just cannot beat. And the community immediately split into two camps. Some believe that in this way 33 showed disrespect to opponents, others think that this should be not a problem and it's time to get rid of this tradition. But the best thing is that the players themselves took the situation quite calmly and even with a sense of humor. So Blitz, the coach of Liquid, said that it's because the team just hates Quinn. <laughs> I was acting. Or was I? Actually, it's not surprising why Liquid players feel this way about GG. At last year, teams played 12 matches, out of which Liquid won only 3. The Gladiators destroyed their opponents, thanks in large part to Quinn, who showed and continues to show an incredible level of play. Quinn, by the way, himself said that it's illogical to shake hands after a best of 2, and that he actually has no conflict with 33, and they're just bodies. Let's hope that this is all real and there is no conflict between the teams. And any situations like that are only needed to fuel interest in the matches. The participants of BB Dacha also shared their opinion about the tournament itself. For example, 23 Savage said the tournament is almost perfect in terms of organization, but even it has its downsides. The main one he pointed out was food. According to the player, he and many other Asian players need rice, not a bunch of potatoes. Another problem of the tournament, according to the player, is the hyping in pubs, as there are not many players in Dubai and the server are pretty empty. Because of this, they have to play on European and Asian servers with high ping. SinQ also talked about the advantages of the tournament. According to him, the hotel where they stay is very good and probably the most comfortable of those he has been. The player also noted that he really liked the restaurants and local food. It seems that if the price pool is increased, the tournament could soon become the best and may even surpass the popularity of majors. And speaking of majors, as they were cancelled, Yarrow also shared his thoughts. According to him, cancelling such large and important tournaments is not the best idea, especially since they have been around since 2015, sort of mini internationals. Of course, they removed the DPC system which many complained about, but because of this, now a whole bunch of open qualifiers are being played. As a result, teams don't have to pay for a slot and any skilled team can easily qualify for the tournament. According to Yarrow, this is a good opportunity for tier 2 teams, and it's hard not to agree with him. Hey, Friends, what do you think? Do you miss the majors? Because personally, I am. Write your thoughts in the comments below. Let's discuss. By the way, Yarrow's teammate Collapse has compiled a tier list of the best offlaners at the BB Dacha. As a result, Gunner and Noticed ended up in the B tier, XXS, Jabs and Miero made it to the A tier, while all the others along with Collapse found themselves in the S tier. And actually, it's not surprising, because some of the best teams in the world went to this tournament, and it's very difficult to play without a good offlaner. It's very interesting to see who will ultimately win this tournament, and whether it will be the merit of a single player or if there are no longer teams where there is one carry who can solo pull the game. 
Speaking of solo carriers, former player of OG and current coach Misha said in the interview that he could easily boost any pro team. According to him, he analyzes and understands picks very well. He also noted that he constantly studies the opponent and because of this he could become a reinforcement for any team. Well, it's probably time to move on to the most interesting matches of the second game day, and perhaps we should start with the most anticipated match, which many expect to see in the finals of the tournament, namely Spirit vs Extreme, Ame vs Yadero, the battle for the title of the best carry. On the first map, the Chinese team immediately surprised us with their preparations. They picked a mid green ranger for XM. It's unclear why this was done, but maybe as the game progresses, he will make an impact. I personally like how Sinkyu smartly plays around mid and constantly catches Laurel making mistakes. Although Laurel still couldn't be completely suppressed, and Spirit's course had all top three networks on the map, and the mid wind ranger has yet to make a mark. The game was spectacular at times. Just look at the golden chronospheres from Yetro. Or how Laurel failed to kill Solo the Tormentor. It seems like a lot of time has passed since Thompson showed that you can solo kill Tormentor with Dazzle, but Spirit's mid laner hasn't learned this trick yet. He pressed his W too early, but at least Yetero managed to grab the shard. And in the fight for Roshan, Team Spirit's carry delights us with another powerful and beautiful Chronosphere, and it seems like the Chinese team is having some big problems. Uh, yeah, Купил Блейд Фалагрити сверху, будет того. Миру отжимают. Смотрим. Атака. Моментальная в белочку. Погибает. Без байбека к Синкю. РПХ. Все это по Вайду. Правда, Стоун Гейс как будто в другую сторону смотрел. Да, Едора. Отличный подход по двоим. Возникают проблемы теперь уже у Медузы. Мана Трейна вытаскивает ману. Едора, пей! Едора бьет. What I like about Extreme Gaming is their excellent macro play. The way they use smokes and read the opponent's movements on the map shows us that Spirit has a serious competitor. After all, Ami only recently assembled the team and the players are not so well coordinated as their opponents. Yadero shows how to create highlights on Void, what other carry on the pro scene would dare to jump alone into the enemy high ground and burst down two heroes with Chrono. Сам сопротивляться контесту Варда. Да, 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 и Тора кричит, да, конечно, и тебя тоже мы вылечим. Это просто нереально, это просто нереально. XM, это... кстати, здорово, двух оров, подвез, окаменел, я так понимаю, Дазл, не успел ни одной кнопки нажать, и Тора с Аедисом, таймволк, секунда, дожить бы, нет. Of course, Laurel got caught in the crossfire, but on this map he's being heavily targeted. Still, the dragons have enough damage to take down Radiant. And in the next fight, Yarrow creates a magnificent moment for his teammates. Just look at how beautifully he did it. Это было быстро. Да, Эзелил, кстати, неплохо помогает. Амен, разворотся, каменел Едора, Едора, Едиса нет, маны, маны тоже нет. Погибает Едора, но, правда, есть еще другие парни, с которыми надо разбираться, Какой а чем непонятно. Очень много иллюзий, медузы урона выдает, коллапс Кошмар. даже рядом. И это после байбека еще был Бейн. То есть в данном эпизоде погибло 5, 6. And the final touch on this beautiful map was a charge from Collapse and a triple kill from Yadero, after which the Chinese team typed GG. Round 2. Fight! In the second game, Extreme Gaming decided not to get creative and simply picked the meta heroes. And just look at that Death Prophet on the fifth pick. It's pretty normal for the Chinese region, by the way. This time, Ame and his team played even better, with Sinkyu having a net worth comparable to the enemy mid laner throughout the entire game. Look at how Extreme Gaming execute a brilliant smoke, baiting the dragons onto the centaur. STP, а ребята стакнулись четвером из Team Spirit. Они очень компактно играют, одно нападают на кентавра, поднимают, пробивают, кучу магического. Дэмэджа Тимбер пропиливает минус. Пака в ответ. Забирают или нет? Да. Слаб. Спад. Нет. Спас. Ларл. Ай. Нет. Чуть-чуть. Коллапса пробивает под мэйдж слейером. Мало урона наносит. Ну, меньше во всяком случае. Дивай на саппорте вносит большой импакт. Нитора пришел. Нитора да. Сайнс получил, опять, но перекачка опять работает. Перекачка. Ну, Причем что, перекачка чтобы... в три уже. Да. Гений перекачки. Ренат, кстати, был сворован, и поэтому вернулась на слу. Но неужели это та самая ситуация, как и была в той игре? Едора не отпускает. А хотя мисс сработал, мисс, Едора! Нет, нормально, Грейпс Ворм, форма, да, неплохо. Ксенкью дальше идет, правда, под ушами пошки, но мы же понимаем, что самый главный молодой человек должен жить. И или, 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 или Едора стопит, пошел, замедление. Едора не тот коридор выбрал для отхода? Или как? Сайленс сверху, перекачка... Погибает. Перекачка не поможет. 
And in my opinion, this is what sets the Chinese team apart from other teams, which stand no chance against Spirit. Radiant dictate their own pace and understand perfectly the timing of their power spikes and when to take fights. Spirit can't even read some of the Extreme Gaming's moves. Just look at this fight. Сейчас будет битва, сейчас будет жаришка. Миру первого хорошая цель. На самом деле главное, чтобы урона хватило, потому что Мира тут с лотусами, откровенно говоря, балуется. И да, вы времени немного выиграл. Сайленс, XM, атака хорошая. Через гоним, я так понимаю, берут сейчас пака на лопатки, укладывают. Уходит и тоже живым из этой драки. Понимает, что продолжать это бессмысленно. Погибает также и Магомед Халилов. Ами и his team timely read that the dragons were going to take Roshan and attack them at the moment when the Dyer were not ready to fight. The dragons clearly were not prepared for such gameplay from Extreme Gaming. And when Team Spirit decided to go for a smoke themselves, the Chinese team easily read it and punished them. It feels like Ами and his team are on another level in terms of macro play and the dragons don't look so formidable against them. Yero tells his teammates just to give up two lanes and farm the items they needed. BKBs are necessary for Pac and Morphling as there's just too much magic damage from Extreme Gaming. And here it is, the decisive fight that will determine who will take the second map. The Chinese effortlessly outplay Spirit in the second map and show the world that their lineup will be one of the most serious contenders in this season. And besides this outstandingly beautiful game, a miracle happened. Spirit's unreal win streak has ended. After Spirit won a series of 21 games, their win streak was broken by a draw against Team Ame. And after the second map, Mira posted a video where he admitted that the second map was lost due to his mistakes. It might have been so, but it's not right to blame a single player. Perhaps the team simply wasn't ready for such gameplay from Extreme. Even Yadro admitted that Ame is one of the best carries in the world. World. It will be very interesting to watch the final between them. But the next day saw no less interesting matches being played. For example, Falcons vs Gaming Gladiators. So on the first map, Malrin and the guys decided to play it safe and pick their strongest heroes. After all, GG is not the kind of opponent you want to take risks against. Or draft in an unconventional way. So Radiant is unrecognizable on this map. They started playing more as a team and there are no longer issues with pressing buttons. And nothing was working out for Anton and his team. Duraccio and his alchemist dies for the fifth time. While Skitter just go way ahead in terms of farm. Dyer's carry did the best to create space for his team and therefore caught every Radiant smoke. And as a team, GG looked much weaker than their opponents this time, allowing Skitter to make solo frags under the enemy's high ground. Just look at how poorly GG is holding their positions. Zerubic, it's way too easy to catch you. Dracho needs to be careful in the mid lane as they just jump in and he's looking so squishy at this point and the coil catches the entire back line. Ace bombs the darkest head to try to get out but the constant stuns out from the slaughter. Too much skitter under the cover of his own BKB. Does not seem to care about gaming gladiators damage. The guardian grieves just to heal them up and reset as you have the Song of the Siren shard as well, so you can heal... Okay, I mean... All that's left for Anton and his team is to wait for the start of the second map, and while there's time, to get a boost. With such gameplay, they definitely won't be able to defeat the Falcons. On the second map, GG finally woke up and began to press Falcons in their aggressive style. Duraccio, of course, tries to make the game as difficult as possible for his team, but even without the carry, everything went according to the plan for the guys. You know, this wasn't their first time playing with Anton. With Orchid and Kanka, Radiant made a couple of successful smokes on Pog and it looked like the Gladiators had the chances of taking the second map. But Snaking turns the whole game around with a single curse. Any hero. They're really forcing the issue. I don't blame him. There's the Winter's Curse. It's gonna taunt them for the moment. Duraccio has the nice. but the curse outcome from Snake King manages to grab Quinn and Skitter. He's gonna collapse on top of him. Your egg not gonna get up. It does last second, but they can focus it up, and Duraccio's dead as well. What a find from Snake King. Tofu on the run. Not gonna be able to get away. And Duraccio, his TP, no shot. The Yule's there to cancel. And gaming gladiators. After such a fight, GG completely lost their way and couldn't properly latch onto heroes, while Duraccio couldn't find a position in the fights at all, constantly being found by the unknowing Razor. For them. 
Ooh, Tofu and Crit right next to each other, playing off the final of some good place vision. In comes that Sven. Gets really close to taking down Ace. So they will be able to coil up three onto the backside. And with the stop, uh, they're just chasing down this. Lina Duratio doesn't have the damage. That's going to be the Aegis. And Quinn's just on the run. That ward completely dismantling Game and Gladiators. And this is looking really rough now. No buyback on your Lina. They've come Even having the Aegis, GG Scary couldn't do anything in the fight. In a matter of seconds, they knocked out the Aegis out of him, and when he respawned, he was immediately sent back to the tavern. Malrin and his team effortlessly take out the Gladiators on the second map and secure such an important victory for themselves. After yesterday's loss, I thought that the Falcons had run out of steam and couldn't put up a fight against tier 1 teams. But as we can see, the top 1 team of the region could very well become the dark horse of this tournament. Another match we wanted to show you was the Chinese Derby. But what is a Chinese game without interesting strats, right? I honestly thought that I could see position 4 Monkey King only in my pubs, you know, just jumping around the trees and killing couriers. But Sinkyu, as usual, pleases us with something interesting. I like this player, always plays strongly and he has cool builds and strats. And have you seen how cute he is in life? Extreme Gaming's support is so brilliant that even with a second level at 9 minutes he can contribute as much impact as three enemy heroes combined. Some analysts say that if it wasn't even for the Azor Ray couriers being dead, Radiant Cores would be quite poor. Even a solo lane centaur was able to take out 4k at 10 minutes. That's considering he was up against two heroes and even got sent to the tavern a couple of times. And you know guys, Ame should be praised as well. He's not seeing you obviously, but he clearly knows how to chrono. Of course, a banger of an item. Ganked here, Bok is there with the full combo, Shackle. Ooh. But Hand he's of out of there, and they're gonna turn this around with XM getting a nice Laguna Blade onto Faith Beyond, who's also barely gonna live! Chronos Ame. Beyond the three! Perfect placement! Oh Beautiful my song. god, it literally could not have been any better than that. And they're gonna get three off the back of just a gorgeous, gorgeous Chronosphere. Make it four now. And just like th Azur Ray are honestly and actually a good team, except that their opponents look just way, way better in terms of skill, especially since they don't have Sinkyu. Azur Ray just couldn't withstand such pressure from Extreme Gaming. And after another lost fight already at 25 minutes, they typed GG. Here's an interesting fact for you this map so far was the fastest played in the tournament. Duracho wins Aurora for a full 5 seconds more. On the second map, Sinkyu decided to spare Azur Ray and picked a standard and common Lion. Of course, he can do wonders on Lion too, but Extreme Gaming itself stacks very well, opponents can't keep up with their pace. Here Sinkyu makes a call to his team, let's pretend we're retreating and then we'll catch the Templar Assassin on the turn after TP in the smokes. And of course it worked out, it could have worked out any other way. I also really like Extreme Gaming's mid laner, his style of play reminds me of how Sumail used to play. He is always aggressive and creating chances for his team, he's clearly got enough skill for such a spectacular game. As though Ray has nothing to do but run in fear from a formidable star studded lineup led by Sinkyu. Honestly, if I were in Radiant's shoes, I'd do exactly the same. Get some sort of a counter initiation, FY. Okay, Wisdom Rune is what they're kind of baiting here. Hoof Stomp to start things Good out, swap. but a nice swap to save him for the time being. And the Kanka is getting decimated. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're all three dead. Blue drops, FY as well. Just like in the blink of an eye, three dead. Finger of Death gets the fourth. Even if Azur Ray decided to attack first, Extreme Gaming did it sooner. They didn't leave the slightest chance for the Dire to attack the opponent. There's the X mark. Yeah, X mark back. Can they? If they can burn through the ages, that'd be pretty big. But instead, counter initiation from XM gets the Searing Chains onto two. There's the Water Park. Doing nothing. Finger not quite enough onto Lu. And Jin Q will die. So a good kill. From Azure, they're gonna need to get more than that. Oh, that's a lot of damage mm. from Faith Beyond, but a beautiful has done for XSX. Not enough to actually save his Ember. Oh, they're all gonna get swapped after the TP. So that'll cancel that. Yeah, just drops. like that, it's a th Well, and here, after Extreme Gaming lost their main unit in the form of Lion, the fight was immediately lost. It's not surprising, because he's the game changer here. Please, guys, help me out. Write in the comments below when it happened that the meta is now about Mjolnir on Templar Assassin. I can still understand purchasing this item against Illusions, but the regular game? Why? I think it ruins the game. Azur Ray on the second map just couldn't stand the fact that they were being choked under the fountain again, and just 
were staying AFK. And props to XM who just flew on remnants and entertained the audience a little, while his teammates made mega creeps during this time. Well, their opponents understood perfectly that there was no point in playing any further. And now we head to the regular section, our lovely highlights of last two days. At the beginning we will watch a fight for the high ground between VP and Team Liquid. On X with the roll on in, Coil comes out, can they get the pango? Great toss away to save the Chen, in comes the Dawnbreaker ult. As noticed, also needs to get out the instant blink 33, looking for a lasso, he's at the ready, will he find it? Mickey on the throne, the target is to end this there. game, they're falling. I mean, they're trying so dang hard here. The BKB, there's the lasso. They've got their target. It's the Alchemist. Can Waterfalls. they bring it down? He's so far away from his team. That's the dieback. And noticed on this Dawnbreaker will fall. Mickey seemingly doing it at this point, And it's going to be Liquid's game. The second highlight is from the game between Team Spirit and BB. Oh, they actually catch out the monkey. That, that can they again? kill him, though, is the question. Nightfall trying to do as much as he can, but Yatar gets to the other side. Gets turned to stone again. Miera destroys him with the double edge. Takes the rapier for himself. And now Laurel does a decent amount of damage to Nightfall. But he has to get out of dodge. It's he is doomed back. up, but collapses the one in a lot of trouble. Laurel going in very deep. He's going to use the Wind Waker to try to get away. It's a Toro buys Hold back. The card. He picked up the other rapier from the base, remember? So he's still a threat. Uses the Wukong's command again. And the last one is the biggest fight from the Chinese Derby. And stroke. Or he's there with the Dragon Tail. LSA's Donald's. coming. Solar Guardian coming in as well. Dodge. Jin Q oh. with a very powerful Wukong's command. All those couriers killed for this. And now Ori stuck inside will die three for nothing and just look at the hp on everyone for extreme guys that's all for today thank you for watching don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys also hit that like button and subscribe to follow the best dota 2 news channel i'm not saying goodbye for a long time see you soon